Hey guys, welcome back to Pass Money Plan. Today's topic is going to be the worst advice we have received in our lives. Kirby, you can start this one off. There's a lot of advice that's out there. And, and you know, going through this journey in life, everybody's going to, you know, want to sound like an expert or want to say, you know, something that influences other people's life. Um, trust me, you're going to get advice from everybody, from smart people to the dumbest people in the world. You're just going to get it. I mean, is all advice good? No. Is all advice bad? No. And the thing that you're going to find that you're going to find good advice in the most uh, unsuspecting places. And both all that being said, Alex, I'm going to start off with you. So what is the best or no, no, forget the best. What is the worst advice that you've ever received from somebody? You don't have to say who it is. Just yeah. what's the worst advice you've ever received? All right. So the worst advice I've received is being told, and this is throughout um, my whole childhood. This is through my early adulthood. Well, I mean, it's still early adulthood, adulthood for me. But uh, <laughs> but uh, is the harder I work, and the more that I make that I need to spend more on myself, um, that I need to reward myself. I think that's the common saying is you need to reward yourself. And that is advice I hear from everybody. That is coworkers, that is family, that is close family. Um, so, you know, that's pressure from I'm not trying to call out people, but uh, it could be parents, it could be uncles, it could be, you know, anything like that. Um, and trying to explain to them my goals and how that doesn't make sense for me is um, something that, like, they don't understand. And it's hard to explain it because they don't look at things the way I do with money. So... They I got I got a question for you. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. I go. got a question for you. Have, when 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 people told you to, um, you know, you're you get promoted. You know, you probably started off in the janitor's closet. Now you up there doing big things with the big wigs, rubbing shoulders and elbows with the big guy. And people was giving you that advice to you know you need to enjoy yourself more. Did you try to do it? Did you did you try to enjoy yourself more? And if so, how did it make you feel? Like with the higher ups and stuff. No, I'm just saying, like when you start getting promoted yeah, yeah. in your job, um, did you did you try to did you try to uh, treat yourself or and stuff like that? How did it, how did it make you feel? Yeah, yeah, I think I did. Um, I uh, about, you put like butter on your bagel or something. God <laughs> <laughs> damn! I Jeez, anyone that watches this was the guy, like the worst, <laughs> cheapest person in the whole world. <laughs> like, Alex, he is on at all. <laughs> he is, he is, he is. <laughs> but, so, so, what do you do? What do you do when you, I mean, when you took the advice, what do you do? No, like, I used to, okay, I used to like watches and stuff. Um, right, but then I was like. I don't know. It's just like, like I, I, I still do like watches, um, but I don't wear them because for one, also, I just don't like to show that I'm that kind of person. And the way I look at it is like, there's always going to be someone that's bigger and better. Like there's always going to be someone like you could have a $400, $500 watch, but there's people out there with multi deca million dollar watches. Like you know, those are like the real people that are doing something like those people that watch costs nothing to them to afford that. So, you know, it's stuff like that. And I'm glad it stopped at like hundred dollar watches, like in the four or $500 range, rather than getting to like the thousands, because that would have been a big setback, I think. But there was stuff like that, or like, I'd like um, certain shoes and stuff like, because I used to dress up more at work for the dressing for the work environment and so like yeah right, pretty much so there's like there's uh some nice shoes that i like and those were just expensive too and 
Um, I do like wait, to wait. make yeah. sure, make sure, make sure, un make sure everybody understand when you're saying expensive, he's meaning over five dollars. That's what he means. <laughs> No, <laughs> no. <laughs> like it'd be like be like in the hundred fifty dollar range, I guess. But okay, yeah, and, get gotta get some baselines for you. <laughs> right. But yeah, stuff like that. Um, and when I, I mean, at like a certain, and I'm glad I felt this, uh, early on was I was just like, why am I doing this? Like, cause I was like. I know what I want to get. Like, I want to have more investments. My, I knew all along my goal was like, I want to be financially free in the sense that I am independent from the place providing me that income. So right. in order to do that, I need to use more of that income and invest it rather than just buying stuff I don't need. So I'm glad I caught on to that quick. Um, I never, you know, I never did like extremes. Like, I mean, there's, you know, obviously there's people that buy like jewelry and all this stuff. Like I didn't go like crazy and I, I knew people going on bigger vacations than I was, but so I just very soon cut that off and then just started like investing that money. Cause I didn't want to fall down that hole that I saw other people fall down. Right. That makes sense. That makes sense. A lot of sense in the world. But yeah. And I mean, it's a, uh... Like I said, you get you get advice from many people in many different directions. I mean, most of the advice you're gonna get is from your parents. Um, I'm not saying you, I'm just saying people in general. And I always say, question information received, no matter where it comes from. Hell, even if it comes from me, question information received, because you gotta. They're basing it off of something. It's either family tradition. And then if it's family tradition saying you're getting the information from your parents or getting the advice from your parents, if it's family tradition, okay, reward yourself, but how did it turn out for those people? It's always that's why I'm always about question information. People that's always telling, you know, you know, reward yourself. And I hear that a million times, but 99% of the time is from people that's broke. I ain't gonna lie to you. They they broke as hell. Talking about, oh, well, you, you need to splurge. You need to enjoy life. You need to enjoy yourself. Yeah, that time will come. Grind. Enjoy yourself later. But grind. Not, oh, I grinded for three days. Now let me go let me go buy a Louis Vuitton purse. No, grind. Put some years into grinding. And just after you put some years into grinding, then everything else will work. But the problem with most people... The 99% of the people is they want to grind for two days and then, like, oh, you got to reward yourself. You got a promotion. Oh, we got to have a promotion party. We got to have a movie and party and all, all this other stupid crap that's out there. But yeah, no, I agree with you 100%. Yeah. And that, I mean, that mentality is just like rewarding yourself. If if I lived with that mentality, I would never be able to get to say where I am now at 24 years old at all. Um, mm -hmm. And I had that pressure a lot. And I think the hardest thing about um, rejecting that advice is trying to convince other people that they're the crazy one, not you. Because the way you would like the way I think is not and I've slowly come to realize is not the way that 99 percent of Americans think. So I'm the one that looks crazy. And. You know, it's just it's different goals. It's different goals from what I want, from what the majority of people want in life. And I understand that in order to achieve what I want, I have to make all these different sacrifices and I have to be willing to go through the grind, like you said. And um, yeah, it, and that's that's a big one, too, uh, because. You know, people call you all kinds of names, they'll say. You're greedy. They'll say I'm greedy, like an asshole. I'm like, because I only think about money, but it's like, no, it's like you just don't, they don't get the big picture. They don't understand what I'm trying to achieve. And like you said, there is a time for that. Once you do achieve it, I think, yeah, then you can, you can enjoy whatever you want. You can do whatever you want because it'll be a drop in the bucket, the amount of money that you're spending on leisure and activities. Right. 
But in the beginning, that would those would be the biggest setbacks for me is blowing money on stuff like that when the bigger picture and the bigger goal is to achieve uh, or grow my portfolio. Makes sense. Makes sense. Makes sense. But what is your what is your worst piece of advice you've ever received? The worst piece of advice I've ever received was, and for all all the uh, people who came from you know areas that I came from, um, we've heard it so many times, um, and. Actually, Cat Williams, he said it best. Worst piece of advice was don't change. Don't change. And what, especially everybody, that I mean, like, you know, Alex, but people don't know. I played football ever since I was like eight years old. I'm not going to say I was the best person on the team, but I was close, you know. And, um, <laughs> and, and so everybody had bigger aspirations for me as far as, you know, sports and things like that and then that's what i always heard i would walk through the neighborhoods i would always talk to people even when i was college i would always go back to the old neighborhood oh man don't change man stay the same don't change that's the worst advice i got because the thing is i adapted that mentality you know even though i wasn't in the you know i didn't go to their aspirations of you know professional or anything like that you know, I joined the military and it was still don't change, don't change. And I was still trying to hold on to that hood mentality. I was still trying to hold on to it. Almost got me killed a couple of times, too. Especially when I was like, oh, I'm from the D. Um, I'm from Detroit. <laughs> so that, that's, I realized I'm from Detroit. I ain't from the D. I'm from Detroit. <laughs> when, you, when you go in there, and, you know, you're trying to play hard and you're in these third world countries where... Where the real, real, real thugs and gangsters at, and shooting. It's, it's a whole different. It's a whole different D when, when that, <laughs> when that pop off. But, but I never. But the thing was, was when what what they were saying was, once you get to a certain level of success or a certain level of income, don't change. And then I always try to, I always try to hold on to it. And then what it did was. You know, even in the military, I'm sitting here trying to save money to build my nest egg to you know, do bigger and better thing. I always thought, oh, I got to represent for the hood. I got to have the latest and greatest clothes. I got to have the latest and greatest shoes. You know, I always got to go back to the hood and and just hang out in the hood just because that's where I'm from. Never change. Be that same person. If you're the same person at 15, 16, 17, 18, as you are at 30, you fail to life. As you progress and you achieve success, then your mentality and your mind shift and your economic surrounding should change. But I always try to stay there. And the more I try to stay connected to the hood, the more I stay broke. You know, I will make a little money and then give it all back because I'm being real. I'm being hood. I never change. And then the, the crazy part is when I started you know, went through the cycle and the grind again to try to make it again. And I didn't go back and I started changing to develop to the situation I was in. The more money I had, the more influence I had, the more contacts I had, the more my network grew. Going to the things that I was striving for instead of going back to the things that were doing nothing for me. And that was like the biggest mind shift uh, for me or the biggest change for me was getting rid of all the things that wasn't being productive. Not changing is crazy. You'll be crazy to not change when, I mean, when we all broke together and we got $5 between us trying to get, you know, trying to put gas in the gas tank to get to the mall. That's one mindset. But if I got hundreds of thousands in the bank and everybody still got five dollars and five trying to put five dollars on gas and I gotta go back to that mentality. Where do you think they're gonna get the money to get the gas to go to the mall from? Me. So they're gonna keep sucking and sucking and sucking. And I'm not saying that you know people in the hood are bad, but I have to change my mindset. I gotta change the group of people I'm around. I gotta change what I'm doing to get to where I'm trying to go, if you're trying to go somewhere. But 
I was stuck for years on end trying to achieve, but then go back to the hood to try to justify my achievement. And then as I go back to the hood to justify my achievement, I would end up getting back into that mentality of, oh, you know, spend it because you got it, blow the bag, fake it till you make it, all that. But the truth was, is I haven't made it yet. So once I started, when I realized that, hey, if I change and it started developing these habits, these principles and things to be more successful, I would be more successful. And then that's what I did over time. And I just had to change because the advice that I got of never changing was going to keep me in the same situation. With all that being said, guys, if you like the video, hit the like button. Uh, leave a comment down below if you got any questions for us. Share this video, subscribe, and we'll see you guys in the next one.